Good morning and welcome to our daily devotion. This is our devotion for Thursday, April 7th, as we continue to go through Holy Week and using it to meditate on who we are as God's people and, and how he calls us to live. Today we're looking at Jesus' trials and we're just sticking in, in the Gospel of Luke today as we're looking at these trials beginning in Luke chapter 22, but we're going to do a little bit in chapter 23 as well. And it reads, When the day came, the assembly of elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Pilate then called together the chief priests and rulers of the people, and he said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod. For he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done to him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found no I have found in him no guilt deserving death, and I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. What a trial, right? Now the trial happened in a couple parts because Jesus was tried by the religious leaders of the Jews, then by Pilate, then by Herod, then by Pilate. He gets moved around a lot because nobody wants to actually take responsibility. Well, let me backtrack on that. I think the religious leaders had no problem taking responsibility because I think they thought they were doing the right thing. After all, Jesus did claim to be God. When Jesus said, um, now the Son of Man will be seated. Jesus was laying claim to God. That was an Old Testament um, name that, that was given to God. Now what the religious leaders never stopped to ask themselves, not whether or not he claimed to be God, they never stopped to ask, is he? Yes, he says he is. So now you have a question. And this is a question we all have. Is Jesus the Son of God? Or isn't he? See, it, it seems like a relatively simple question because really quickly most of us within the Christian church would say, well, yes, yes, he is the Son of God. That confession leads to a lot of stuff that we need to deal with. And I want to get rid of another one of the options because sometimes people say, um, is Jesus the Son of God or isn't he? Well, here, here's the three different deals. Is Jesus the Son of God? Is he a, just a great teacher, or was he crazy? Well, we have to pull out, was he just a great teacher? Because if he wasn't the Son of God, if he wasn't the Messiah, he laid claims to being that, and a great teacher would never claim to be a God. So Jesus was either the Son of God, or a crazy man. And he's on trial for it. Now, an interesting thing, the civil leaders, the Roman leaders, find no guilt in him. He has done nothing wrong. But the religious leaders feel that he has misused God's name. He's blasphemed. That, mean, that means he's dishonored God by claiming to be God. So why do we spend this time talking about the trial today? After all, other things did happen on Holy Week. Well, because Jesus is always on trial. 
within not just our culture, but within the world. Is Jesus God or isn't he? Is what Jesus said true or is it the rantings of a crazy man? Did Jesus actually suffer, die, and rise again? Or is this made up and all our hopes are wasted? You see, this trial continues because Satan is continuously trying to undermine the sacrifice and power of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And in our own lives, sometimes we actually, by the way we act, by the way we live, we don't acknowledge that he is. Here's what I'm talking about, okay? Jesus is on trial for being the Son of God, and we say, oh, without a doubt, he is the Son of God. Now, if Jesus is the Son of God, and we vote in favor of Jesus being the Son of God, shouldn't it stand to reason that if we acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, we should worship him with all our heart, soul, and mind. If that is our confession, if we truly believe in his testimony, and we would be the people in the jury box that says, he is the Son of God, then shouldn't we be living our lives in response to who he is? See, this trial that Jesus is on in this sinful, broken world is being done by sinners. And sinners by nature don't like to be reminded that they're sinful. I think that's one of the things the Pharisees really struggled with. I think they, they saw his power, they saw his love, they saw God's grace, and they didn't understand it, and it challenged their lives, so they condemned it. Even though all signs pointed to Jesus being exactly who he claimed to be, they found him guilty for being exactly that. Jesus is on trial, not just in our world, but in our hearts. And repeatedly, our old sinful nature seeks to condemn him for who he is. What our new creation does, what we are able to do through the power of our baptism into his death and resurrection, is we are able to say, no, he is not guilty. Because he is actually God. And he is actually at work in my life. He has actually paid the price for my sins. He's actually done everything he promised to do. The only guilt he has is mine. And he took my guilt and he took all the punishment for it. So the person who's actually on trial is you and I. And Jesus willingly takes all of our guilt and pays the price for it. So when we finally stand before God's judgment throne, we are found innocent because Jesus has washed all of our guilt away. That's pretty amazing. And it was all made possible because Jesus was willing to stand there and be convicted for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of forgiveness you've given us through Christ. Thank you for allowing him to take our guilt to take our guilty verdict on himself and pay the price for our sins. Help us to give testimony to him and always testify that he is our Lord, Savior, and God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.